Hello everyone, welcome to Unicorn Reviews. Not everyone has the money to get the best parts. Today we'll find out how to upgrade your computer for absolutely no money at all. To achieve such an unlikely goal, we'll be optimizing our PC first and then overclock it later. I'll put links to all the tools we use in the description. Start with getting the demo version of 3D Mark and run the benchmark test. If you get purchased the full version, you can run just one specific test like I will do later. Now that we have a baseline, let's make sure our PC isn't doing too much useless tasks first. Use Windows Search and find Programs and Features. This will give you a list of all software and tools currently installed. Go ahead and remove everything you don't need. If there is a tool or a program you don't know what it does, it's probably better not to remove it. Now that we got rid of all those useless programs, there's a lot of leftovers on our PC. First, go to this computer, then right click your C drive and select properties. Now click the tools tab. Do an error check first, this will move data from bad parts of your drive to healthy sectors. Now use optimize and the defragment drive tool, this will put related files closer together for faster access. With that done, it's time for a disk cleanup. You can find that in the general tab. This will get rid of all those leftover files we had from earlier. To finish optimizing our drive, make sure the compress this drive to save disk space option is unticked. Compressing will help getting more stuff on the drive, but it requires more CPU time, which makes your computer slower. Now we will need a tool called CCleaner. Install the tool and go to the Cleaner tab. First, you use Analyze. This will find a bunch of data that slows down you, your computer. When the search is done, click Run Cleaner. Now, for the final part of optimizing, click the Registry tab. The registry is a database about your Windows installation. Faults in that database will slow you down. Click Scan for Issues. And when the scan is completed, you click Fix Selected Issues. Because the registry is very important, the software asks you to make a backup. You should press Yes and save the backup somewhere convenient. Now, you can fix all selected issues. It's a good idea to do this step twice, as fixing one issue might lead to another one. You should now already have a good increase in performance, but this is of course not enough for us. That's why we're going to do some overclocking. Overclocking is, contrary to popular belief, not dangerous and it won't harm your PC. It will also not reduce its lifetime. It can only go wrong when you're not being patient enough and you rush it and then do it badly. To make your computer faster, you'll have to be patient. A processor runs on a certain frequency. This frequency controls how much time you give your CPU to do a certain task. We can't reduce the amount of tasks, but we can reduce how long it takes to complete one task by upping the frequency. In most cases, your CPU frequency will be around the 3 GHz mark and your GPU will be around 1 GHz. Those speeds are decided by a base frequency or a bus clock and a multiplier. To keep this video simple, we won't touch the base clock. Keep in mind that there are billions of little components in a single chip. That means every chip is different. This means you can't just copy what I or other people on the internet did to our processor. You'll have to do the overclocking yourself. For this, we'll need a few tools. If you have an AMD system, get AMD Overdrive. Intel users will need XTU, which stands for Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. To overclock a dedicated GPU you can use MSI Afterburner. You can also do CPU overclocking in the BIOS. It's actually a better way to do it but it requires a lot of restarts. To test the changes we'll make we will need a stress test as well as a benchmark utility. Before overclocking close all software. The reason we need the benchmark is that because of the way processors work above a certain point or a certain frequency Higher clocks will make your PC run slower. We will also use hardware monitor to monitor the temperatures. With more volts comes a higher power draw and of course a higher temperature. As long as everything is under 90 degrees Celsius you'll be fine. I personally use 85 degrees as a maximum just to be safe. Our stress test will be OCCT which has hardware monitor built in. But to be sure we'll use both programs. Just make sure you start OCCT first. Before doing any overclocking at all, select CPU limb pack and choose automatic. You should set the duration to 0 hours and 30 minutes, with an idle period of 5 minutes at the beginning and at the end. 
Select use 90% memory. Now click the on button. This will stress test your CPU. Should your PC be running hot already, it's a good idea to open it up and clean the dust out. If that doesn't fix it, skip to the GPU part. Now that we know our reference temperature for our CPU and we know it's stable, open up the CPU overclocking utility and choose the multiplier option. Increase this multiplier by half or by one and repeat the 30 minute stress test. If your PC doesn't crash or doesn't get too hot, up the multiplier again. Keep repeating this process until you reach a point where your computer crashes. If at that point your temperatures are still okay and your PC allows for it, you can up the voltage on the CPU core in very small increments. If you don't want to do this, skip forward to the GPU part. Now it's time to play with our graphics card, the most important press processor when gaming. Open up Overdrive or XDU again if you're on ATI, AMD or Intel graphics. NVIDIA users, which are dedicated cards as well as ATI and AMD cards, should use MSI Afterburner for this step. Open OCCT and select GPU 3D. Now, same automatic settings as we used earlier, but this time take the uh, error check. The FPS limit should be set to a very, very high value like 6000 and just run the 30 minute test again. If you already get errors or overheating, your video card might be broken. For others, use your overclocking utility and increase your GPU speed by 10 MHz or 50 for Intel users. Keep doing the test and then upping the frequency again. Keep repeating that procedure until you uh, achieve a frequency where it says you have errors. Like with our CPU, you lower the speed again by 10 or 50 MHz just for stability reasons. Run the test again, the stress test, and when that's done and done successfully, you should run the benchmark test again. Okay, so as we can see purely from our score, we get a 24% increase in our score. We get a similar increase in our CPU, which is great if you're going to be rendering or, you know, for gaming, a faster CPU can always help. And we're getting 20 one percent extra fps which is the difference between a 150 euro graphics card and a 200 euro graphics card please let me know in the comment area what your first and last score were and if you like the video press the like button if you dislike the video go ahead and break my heart no matter what you thought about this video subscribe to unicorn reviews for many more how-to's and tech reviews thank you all very much for watching